buried beneath the layers of the finished bedrock lies Onkalo, the site of what is to be the world's first permanent storage facility for spent nuclear fuel. The spent nuclear fuel will be finally disposed underground in the depth of 435 meters. So there are different approaches to the long-term management of used nuclear fuel. Some countries will recycle it, and some countries will not recycle it and just simply store it and, and dispose of it for the long term. So the solutions that we are using in that case is what we call deep geological repositories, in which we have these highly engineered packages in which we put the used fuel and to, to isolate it, I mean, with concentric layers of insulation to make sure that this material remains separated from the environment from hundreds of years. The finished bedrock is nearly two billion years old and geologically stable, making it an ideal location to be a nuclear tomb. Most of the finished bedrock is quite capable and good for final disposal. Somebody has had a joke that if you would have a finished map and you would throw darts with your eyes closed, then almost anywhere that the dart hits, it's a suitable place. There might be fracture sites, that there might be a little bit water flow, but we are not placing any spent fuel on those fracture sites. This is how Onkelo's storage system works. First, spent nuclear fuel is sealed in a steel canister, which is then placed inside a thick copper shell to resist corrosion. The sealed canisters are transported to the repository and lowered about 400 meters deep into the granite bedrock. Once in place, bentonite clay, known for its excellent sealing properties, is packed around the canister. When it comes into contact with natural groundwater deep underground, the clay swells, sealing any gaps and preventing more water from reaching the canister. Finally, the tunnels are filled with more bentonite clay, further isolating the canisters from the environment. As an added safety measure, sensors constantly monitor the facility for any signs of leaks or contamination. In the beginning, there were a lot of different, you know, crazy ideas that shooting it to the space or dumping it to the oceans. The geologists and all the people, they have decided that the best way is to put it on the bedrock, which is really, really old. You can say that choosing the site, there are different types of reasons. One is geology. One is the logistical site. And one is where the public acceptation is quite good. I think there is a reason why nuclear waste management is much less debated and feared in Finland than maybe in any other place. And the reason is that we are the first nation completing like a permanent storage repository under Finnish bedrock. I think huge majority of Finns, they trust that the Onkalo project is done with a precise, careful way. I think that that's created part of the trust that people were more in favor of nuclear during past 10 years than in 1990s. And that we don't want to be relying on other nations, but also don't want to create problems for others by exporting nuclear waste, which must be taken care of very carefully. Many people don't know there is much more radiation released in coal power plants than in nuclear power plants. The waste that is produced in solar panels or batteries. We are talking about very, very toxic materials. Those materials will never decay, and they will be toxic forever. Radioactive waste is certainly a downside of nuclear power. I do like to sort of put it into perspective and say, you know, if you got all of your power, not just electricity, but heat and transportation for your entire life, you would be responsible for basically a soda can of nuclear waste. And the alternative is like 8 million deaths per year from particulate air pollution, potential impacts of climate change, and all the other negative things that, that happen with non-nuclear electricity, it's like, it's worth it. It's like, yes, it's a problem. We have to respect it. We have to handle it well, but it's still worth it. 